Okay, so you've been out and you've been doing your checks in your garden and you've seen something funny. Maybe you've seen a little hole in your leaf or maybe you just seen a, a little eight-legged friend, six legs, whatever. What do you do? Batavia and I are going to help you break it down. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. And this podcast is a companion podcast to the upcoming documentary, Backyard Gardens, a documentary about two families growing food for the first time in a world that lacks nutrition. All right. This is a special episode. This is the first one we're recording with video. (laughs) Right? Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're you're telling me that I push the right buttons and I'm recording and I believe you. I believe if in I, you and I believe you, Ben. If everything's red, we're good to go. Oh, I didn't so, realize I was checking colors. All right. What oh, if I was yeah, colorblind? Always... Have you even ever asked me that? Good grief. Well, the fact that you grow red flowers, I imagine oh, you're not yeah, colorblind. Yeah. Wow. So... You know, actually, I'm not a fan of, not the biggest fan of like red flowers, but that's really off topic. Yeah, that is totally off topic (laughs) because we're going to talk about pests and disease today. Mostly pests, though. And then we'll probably break into disease another time. So exciting. (laughs) Yeah, it it, is. It's the real stuff of gardening, though, right? It is. And I feel like it's the biggest panic attack people have. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, yeah, like. I think we need to break it down, too, because, okay, so truth be told, this is the second time we've done this, Mm -hmm. because we're getting in the habit of doing our recordings twice, but um, we had multiple failures last time, so this one's going to be good. Um, You know, a lot of technical difficulties, Mm -hmm. but we're going to break it down for you in um, prevention, detection, and elimination. The three shuns shall we say, of pests. How's that? I love a good list. A good list. Mm -hmm, So um, why don't we start by you, Batavia, telling us about your morning routine in your garden? It makes me happy. All (laughs) righty. So I actually, as soon as I go outside, when I'm going outside every day, even if I'm not growing yet, I start this routine. So I... Start in the kitchen, make a cup of coffee. If it's a super hot day, I'll also get a glass of water. I will grab my garden apron, my garden hat. I already have my bandana on because that's how I roll. I start stepping out of the back door and then I start the walk. So I walk. The walk. Yeah, I walk the land. Um, is Is that a Johnny Cash song or something? Anyway. So I do a... I walk the line is what you're thinking of. Oh, that's totally not the same. Not even close. No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, maybe he should have created a song Not unless called. you're into amphetamines and stuff like that. Uh, but if that's how you handle this all is the 838 kind of bits, yeah. no. <laughs> so I, um, I do a walkthrough and it's not with the intention of like actually doing anything, but it's just to observe what I'm growing. So I'm doing that now, even while I'm not growing a bunch, but just taking a look at a bed um, for the pur- purpose of the pests we're talking about. I'm looking to see if there's anything out of place, right? You know, yeah. seeing how things are progressing is in part my goal as well. Um, But this is kind of if I need to kind of abort my morning plan and kind of get into some prevention, I want to be able to kind of see that. I don't want it to be later in the afternoon and I'm saying, oh, wait, you know, because that's in part what that morning ritual is for me. So I'll walk in the backyard looking at the different beds and plants and then I'll take uh, my show on to the front yard as of last year. And then I take a look around and see kind of what's thriving, what's struggling, you know, what things that weren't there yesterday that are there that maybe shouldn't be there. Cause I think you're, you're basically, and I think a lot of people do this. And if you don't, you're really missing on, I think a golden time in the 
garden is in the morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, your your pollinators are starting to wake up. They're yeah. coming out, you know, and then you just take mental notes is the key. You mm-hmm. know, a mental note of what's going on out there because you never know. You know what I mean? It's like you walk out there and you, you don't know what you're going to see, but each day you can see the progression of your plants. Yeah. And that's, I mean, first of all, it's a really good thing to do is just to watch that progression, but also to catch things. Yeah. Well, pause before it, you go to catch things. And that's what we're talking about. But the lesson in watching a thing grow, watching that progression, like, I mean, that's one of the best lessons as a gardener, right? So we've talked quite a bit about things in previous episodes about the state you buy a plant in, you know, and if you sow a seed directly, Kind of seeing a bean seed is one of my favorite things to see sprout up. You see that, and day by day, you see how it tra- changes and how it transforms. So, right, yeah, definitely. Um, and and it's okay to, to make it like it's not work. You're really just admiring what you've done, you know, and yeah. what nature is doing. Well, yeah, you don't. I mean, you can harvest and do stuff whenever you want. Sure. But for me, for the most part, it's just enjoying that mm-hmm, moment mm-hmm. you know because i mean let's face it we've been cooped up all winter mm-hmm. a lot of people have been dealing with the coronavirus situation yeah. and you're just waiting to get out there now it's your time so it's like you want to spend as much time as you can it's not hot yeah you know it's nice and cool there's probably a nice little breeze or the birds are out singing and you know ooh, i just got chills thinking about it <laughs> My i actually goodness. today as we were recording we had overcast remember first time that we're actually filming this as well so i'm getting my setup together i'm just move- this is how i move plants around too i'm just moving things around here um so anywho we um this morning i came out and most mornings i regret not getting up earlier because once i get out there it's just like you said it's such a nice day we had overcast this morning it did rain a bit this afternoon um, but i just knew when i walked out this is a perfect time to be out here um, yeah so so yeah so you you know you see something you see something in the garden what are what do you do you see a bug you know that nasty little bug mm-hmm. should you freak out no you should not that's right you know and i see <laughs> you know i see it and i i get it. i totally understand it but like when you go on like instagram facebook mm-hmm. all these different places different forums People naturally freak out about a bug that they see in their garden. And there's not all of them are bad. Yeah. There's actually a small amount that are bad because pollinators are important Mm -hmm. and everybody thinks of bees, but bees are not the only pollinator. Bees and butterflies, they're actually not even the biggest category. Now, I'm not going to break it down what categories because to be quite frank, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I look for damage, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and if you want, you know, detection is the first thing we're going to talk about is, you know, if that's okay with you. Yeah. But you know what? I do want to say another reason. Yeah. Another reason why. (laughs) So my normal face cues, I have to pull back. Yeah, like that. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. uh, No, I'm not interested in that being captured on camera for me. Uh, (laughs) I have an image to to maintain. No, but um, what another reason why you shouldn't panic is from the time you see whatever this uh, this bug or insect is that you're concerned about to the time it takes you to Google it or ask the question, like it's not going to decimate your plant in that time, no. in that window. Right. No. You know, so, and it, to be quite, quite as kept there in some cases, the damage may already be done, you know, and in some cases yeah. you may be catching it at the beginning, but all in all, again, don't panic. Now is the chances of you actually seeing the bug, mm-hmm. the insect, whatever are pretty slim to be honest. Really You're going to notice signs mm-hmm. in your plants. Um, one of the things you're going to notice, um, I think, is you're going to you're going to notice uh, the plant's stature is going to change. Is mm-hmm. that the right term? Sure. Let's go with that. You know what yeah, I mean? It yeah. won't be as perfect. Yeah, yeah. You know, you might There's have some, some discoloration sign of distress. Yes. Right? Distress. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. The word totally slipped mm-hmm. my mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you get that. And then you'll start to see maybe like some poop, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, if the Stuff distress like is called by, caused by an insect of some sort, because yes. your plant could be in um, could be stressed based on you know heat, um, based on sun, based on lack of water. There are a couple of different things. I have some yeah. distressed plants now, and I think it's the sweet sauce that it needs. I have a bunch of yellow Uh-oh. leaves, but those aren't bugs, right? You know, so 
But anyway. Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, see, and that's a number of things, too. And that's why it's important to kind of I, I mean, I first of all, I recommend getting a good book about gardening mm-hmm. and then um, just kind of learning what the different signs are, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. we can go into at another time. But specifically for this, like, you know, a lot of times you'll see like droppings on leaves. Like if you yeah. see a bunch of little like dark, dark pebbles. Uh huh. Like, I don't know, dots on it, then you that's more than likely going to be some kind of feces. Yeah. And that's, again, if you went out the morning before that and the morning before that and the morning right. before that, you realize. So plants don't produce that kind of thing. Right. Let's just let's get that out of the way. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They so, usually don't. Yeah. So they are going to um, it's something else that's come along. Um, although there is what do they call it? Dog vomit. Have you ever Seen no, oh what, my is, gosh. what is this? You have to Google it. Look, warning, trigger alert, it's disgusting. So okay. and sometimes it looks kind of yellowish, it looks kind of pinkish, and it is quite literally, it looks like vomit. And so what ends up happening, it's a fungus. Um, and I first noticed it, and I didn't panic, although I was like, uh-oh. And uh, I Googled it, and then I texted a good friend of mine. Um, it's a fungus that lives, it's spores of sorts that live... I've always seen it on my mulch, believe it or not. So I've seen it in my front yard garden bed. Uh, Is it white? No. Well, I mean, I guess it, one could argue that it's white, but the version I've seen in my yard has been kind of pinkish. And I've seen online pictures that look more yellowish. Okay. Um, but I said that to say, like, that's not from an insect, you know, and one right. could argue that technically it's not from a plant, but that environment produced it. Um, but that's a tangent of sorts. Yeah. So... Way to derail us, Batavia. No problem Way at all. to derail us with when, dog vomit. When else would I be able to bring up do- dog vomit, which is not actual dog vomit? I don't know. The world is I mean, a I have a dog, place. so I see it from yeah. time to time. Let's not but, compare uh, pictures of the two. <laughs> no. No. Because, I mean, like, what's the last um, pest that you've had to deal with? I think aphids last fall. Okay. So mm-hmm, how did you mm-hmm. detect your aphids? Because those are a big one. That's a very yeah, big one. Yeah, yeah. I um, I don't think it was. It wasn't damage to the leaves. It was on kale plants. I think. Um, I think it was more of me. Um, I was about to harvest, and I just happened to look on the underside of the the leaves, and by then it had gone. It it. I hadn't been doing my walkthrough, looking at every plant every morning. This was probably in September right at the point where right. I'm almost over the garden. Uh, so <laughs> I saw like what could be described as an infestation. Um, and I'm trying to think back. I don't want to feed this into my head, but th- were the plants limp? I'm not sure. They weren't, they definitely weren't as spry as you would normally see them, but it right. could be the aphids or it could have been just, again, it's pretty late in the season. Um, and I want to point this out. There was a lot of crowding in that bed, which really created a hot bed for what we're talking about. Wait, don't jump ahead. I no. can't help don't myself. Jump. I can't help myself. <laughs> We have to be organized. I'm like every like toddler meme that's excited about something, which I'm right. totally not excited, which is kind of odd, but yeah. Okay. So the last one I dealt with was aphids mm-hmm. too is a couple weeks ago. Mm. And um, I, I didn't see them. I just noticed that my plant wasn't growing, you know, as peas mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they just weren't growing right. And, you know, I was like, man, it looks sick. Yeah. You know, why is it looking sick? And, you know, fun fact about peas is apparently they can suffer from uh, maggots. Um, the, there's a pea fly that gets down there and around the seed and it'll, you know, they'll lay eggs and they'll have maggots. And I was like, you know, cause that's one of the nastiest things to me is maggots. Like if I see a maggot, I instantly gag. And I was like, Oh, please tell me. So I, I went to go look and I was like, Oh, it was covered in aphids. I'm trying to, I'm trying to control myself here. Like, yeah, don't, don't It's the top five. Like I'm going to freak the, you know what out. Yeah. moments for me yeah but okay all right so it I'm was staying aphids, strong. But, i'm staying strong all right yeah <laughs> but then previous to that and i think one a lot of people deal with is um tomato hornworms mm-hmm. i i haven't personally them. dealt with them but yeah i've seen a lot online um about that being a like that's probably one of the most fast acting pests yes. in a garden it too, happens right? very fast mm-hmm. yeah they decimate uh, th- decimate's not really the word but you know, you have a big bushy tomato plant yeah. and a couple leaves are chewed. You know, your leaves will get chewed sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like whatever. But then you come out and you're like, oh, I got an issue. You uh-huh. know, they kind of start from the top and work down and you'll see the droppings. 
but they're perfectly green. They're big old fat bad mm. boys. And um, fun fact: if you have a bearded dragon, feed them to the feed the tomato hornworms to them. Um, but are you picking those up from your local store? The tomato. <laughs> you can actually buy them online. They're very expensive. Aye, aye. But hell, I raise them in my garden. Okay. So well, but, one quick um, note: you said that they start from the top down yeah generally generally okay not always because you notice that in my experience when i've had like a diseased plant right um that normally works its way up from the bottom up so if yeah. the, both of those things are true or for the m- most part true then that's the way you can distinguish one from another right um right. yeah that's freaky yeah so and i actually i i posted online so there's a there's a thing I'm going to go ahead and just get say it now so I can get it off the top of my head so I can move on. Mm-hmm. Where if you see a tomato hornworm in your garden and it's got these little white sacks all on its back, mm-hmm. do not touch the tomato hornworm. Do not remove it. Because what that is, is that is a type of wasp that is parasitic to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you want them to hatch and they eat from the inside out. Oh. So I posted a picture of it on Instagram and I got crucified. It was cr- everybody. I mean, you know, Facebook everywhere, gardening forums. And they were like, you never do that. I just pluck them off and kill them. And uh-huh. I'm like, if you leave the, the, the infected one on there with the wasp, they hatch and what ended up happening is i went out there and i had like six different tomato worms out there Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. within a week they were all dried up sucked the guts from the inside out and the wasp had just been feeding on all of them this is like a horror story and i didn't have it was it was (laughs) dude it was a that would be a great movie (laughs) i mean they just fed on them so you know leave them out there if you have that but if you don't you know, get rid of them until you see it. But you and every year I always see the wasp sacks oh. on the back of is, them. I get them all the time. Are they more inclined to attack tomatoes in a humid climate? I, I first time I got them was in New England. Mm, OK, OK. Well, that didn't quite zone yeah. six or five or something okay. like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I don't think so. so I wait, don't know why you haven't gotten them. The but. Out, listen, stop speaking it. <laughs> so the Today's outrage your, this is your year yeah i know right oh I'm so ex- no not excited uh so the <laughs> outrage was why would you leave something that's bad for your garden in your garden yes. right yeah, yeah right. i can imagine that and then my whole argument was because it's incubating a beneficial insect yeah yeah like you can visibly like you know a lot of times they'll be like oh well there's such and such you can't see it you can't see it and it's like, well, yeah, if you're leaving something there and you can't really see it, then it, it is hard to do. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. if you actually can visibly see it, leave it. And I, I mean, I learned that my first year because I looked them up and then they said, you know, if they have these white sacks mm-hmm. and I had killed one with the white sacks and I saw another one, I was like, oh, but yeah, I mean, I, I literally got lit up. I mean, you would have thought that I had done something terrible, mm-hmm. but I'm, um, still, yeah. I'm still not sure if you did or didn't. I did something great. <laughs> so you says know. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so says me. I'm a legend in my own mind, just like you are. So it's cool. Yeah, but no, but, but um, I really am. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I really yeah, am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, once you get those things going, you know, just picking out and, you know, with those in particular, they have big poops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the first keys, you know, you go out there yeah. and you see them. So wait, but we're still re- on your identifying identification. What was the, what's the first? Well, we're, yeah. We're, yeah. We're identifying that we have an issue yeah, now. Yeah. So see a thing, something doesn't quite add up, right? You know, if you don't already have material that can help you research it, go to the interweb. Um, if you go into different groups and things, I mean, just make sure wait, it's something on. that you can trust someone, some group. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Stop. Stop. No, I'm on, we, I'm we on a roll take, here. No, nah, but we got to take this one step at a time because... This is a step. Yeah, don't gloss over the uh, the identifying it part because it is good to ask people, mm-hmm. but you need to learn how to do your own research. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because some people just don't know or they'll tell you something wrong and then you can be treating for the wrong thing. Or, Hence these, some a place you trust, a place that makes you a safe place. Yeah, yeah. Are you burying so, like, the lead? You, We're not going to be you, your pest insect identifying group, but I think the goal is to be able to to figure these things out on your own. Is where you're headed. You know, right? every time I see a question online, mm-hmm. I do try and do it though, just because. Well, first of all, that's kind of my background is mm-hmm. identifying animals. 
but I do try and identify it to an extent. It's really hard too, because they're so small. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of times, like I got a, a message on Instagram the other day, somebody was asking me about it and I was like, man, I can't see that. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's so small. Yeah. So, and there's like, there's apps you can get on your phone that turn your phone into a magnifying glass. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's really helpful mm-hmm. too. Um, but you know, you need to be able to look at, so when you look it up, like look it up as a descriptor, but also put what zone or what state you're in. Mm-hmm. What plant because that, it's on. What plant right? it's mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Because, you know, somebody would be like, oh, it's a scorpion. And I'm just saying something on the top <laughs> of my head, you know, and it's like, well, mm-hmm. no, nah, there's no scorpions in Chicago. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but that would, if you identify it, that could be what it would come up to be. So you kind of need to get in a little deeper. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because some pests might not be in your area. They might not even feed on those plants. Mm-hmm. So, and so it's important to know. One of the pests that I often deal with is the uh, cabbage worm. And so mm-hmm. I've never had that. Oh, it's a blessing not to. Oh, because it's so misleading. So it starts in most cases as this white moth. And, I originally thought, oh, it's a butterfly. It's a white (laughs) butterfly. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) Spring is here, right? And so then, you know, it's, um, if when okay, I'll take you through the steps. So you see it, and then you don't think anything of it. You see it land in your garden, and you're like, oh, right? Maybe it's pollinating something, right? And so then you come back out, and your leafy greens, um, those in the brassica family especially, cabbage, collards, things like that, you'll notice, like, On my morning walkthrough, there are holes in the leaves, you know, in some instances, you'll notice that like the top of the leaf has just been completely eaten. Right. You know, so whatever shape that cabbage plant or that um, collard green leaf had no longer has that shape because something has been eating away at it. And so then you start to look further and you notice that if you look really, really close, there's some green. Wait, is that thing moving? It is underneath that leaf. That's a green little worm, right? And so then I take that and I go into the interweb and I start to type in green worm on cabbage leaf or on collard green, you know, Chicago, Illinois, right? Um, And it actually, I saw one and the other and had seen the green worm over the years, but didn't make the connection between the two. And so then it was able to come up with the cabbage uh, worm or the moth that leads to the cabbage worm. And so once I started to do those steps and research that, I actually saw the moth and so descriptive that it has like two black do- black dots or four black dots or something right. on its um, wings. And so then as I the next morning I come out and I see that beautiful moth, and I'm like, that's the culprit. Yep. Uh, so again, it's stepping through. And I only had to learn that once. Right. Well, see, and that's the thing, too. You, you hit on something big, too, is, you know, you said the two black dots helped you mm-hmm. to identify it. Right. Well, there. so, you know, in the animal world, there's multiple ways to identify things. And colors, a lot of time, is not an appropriate way to mm-hmm. identify mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because there can be I mean, you can definitely use it. But there can be variations mm-hmm. that happen. So like a lot of times, like the amount of legs that you see mm-hmm. stuff like that will help, you know, abdomen sizes. And so, I mean, it depends on how technical you want to get. And a lot of things aren't complicated, but if you've got something that's really stumping you, mm-hmm. there are different parts of an animal that you need to look at. Cause you know, it's like when I was working for, um, national marine fisheries and NOAA, we would do, I would ID all the fish Okay. and they had fish that would look the exact same. Yeah. And you had to like rip out their gills and count the amount of gill arches that were on one side. If one had two, it was one. If one had three, it was the other. And that was like how you did it. So, and I'm not saying you need to dissect and and (laughs) have so many questions, so many questions. (laughs) Right. But if you ever really wanted to get into it, Mm -hmm. that would be the appropriate Mm -hmm. way because, you know, there can be variations in color. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, look at people that have like, I don't even know what it's called. I don't even want to bring it up because I don't want to offend anybody. But, you know, like, They'll be uh, like darker colored, and then they'll have like white spots on them or mm-hmm, something, mm-hmm. or like like albino mm-hmm. or something like that. Like that's a different color variation. Yeah. So you know, luckily we can identify humans pretty easily. Well, in most cases, yeah. 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> I've seen some movies where it makes it questionable, but those are movies. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so, you know, keep an eye out on different parts of the insect. You know, how many wings does it have, yeah. for instance? That might be a good thing to kind of kick yeah. it off. Just don't force but, it, right? So it's not like, yeah. it's not this ever never-ending search, right? You know, I'm going to find out 10 years later it wasn't even the moth. It's something else for the collars. No. Uh, well, t- no, it's totally I mean, you the have, moth. Yeah. You have your, your, your basic garden pests, too you yeah, know like yeah, yeah. for the most part you're always going to encounter the same mm-hmm, ones mm-hmm. but like if you go in and everybody like if so let's say you go to a forum and you ask and nobody knows chances are it's probably not going to be a pest and at that point maybe you want to learn about beneficial insects mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i mean so that would be a good opportunity for that because i'm not an expert in um insects or pests or anything by any means but i feel like that would be a good thing to bone up on yeah you know i feel like there's a part of me that's i I won't call it lazy gardening but there's kind of a hands-off approach in gardening it doesn't Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of what i do contradicts that but when it comes to these things and maybe it's just the things i don't know a bunch about um i am inclined to leave a insect alone until i see damage you yeah. know, so, um, and it's risky. Why should you? I mean, yeah, it is. I do the same thing, mm-hmm. though, because I don't know mm-hmm, all of them. Mm-hmm. So I just wait and look for the damage. Yeah. So, okay, so we've done detection. Mm-hmm. You've detected that you have an insect. Now you've ID'd it. Mm-hmm. You've done identification. Are we giving out um, stickers for these, or can we have a check box or mark or something? We're making patches. Yeah, so okay. everybody that listens to this is going to get a patch to sew onto their gardening apron that says that detect- I have learned how to... It. Detection. Detection. That's what it's going to say. I don't know. I know you're joking, but there's a small piece of me that wants a patch. Because I totally have <laughs> a garden what? apron. Yeah. Yeah. Patches. Um, we'll look into that. TBD. Yeah. TBD. TBD. <laughs> the holidays are just, what, six months away, Ben. Just remember me. And I won't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not to worry. I'm going to get patches made just for you. But, you guys heard um, it here so, first. <laughs> yeah. So then you have elimination methods. Mm -hmm. So um, here's the big one. Organic or non-organic? Yeah, it's controversial, right? You know. um, Well, what are you? In life? No, are you organic or a non-organic gardener? I am a, I'm much closer to an organic gardener. Why are you much closer? Um, Because all things I do don't follow organic gardening practices. Whoever made those up on the interweb. Um, like what? So I um, I don't want to get into the organic seeds with you. I just don't. I don't have the energy today. This is the eighth time we've recorded this, so I'm not going there with you. Um, That's not but, the eighth time. <laughs> uh, but I, um, you know, so they, there's organic soil. Right. Sometimes I buy that because it's the cheapest compared to the, well, I guess, traditional soil. And other times right. I don't, right? You know, um, sometimes I mix the two together. Um, I I use organic methods, meaning like I don't spray my garden. Um, like I may spray it with like some soapy water, you know, residue. But, yeah. And one could argue that the soap is a chemical, yada, yada, yada. But I consider that an it organic method. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it is true. It is not. I mean, you know, if you're spraying soap on it, mm-hmm. it's not organic. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think I'm for the most part or part organic, mm-hmm. but I don't think I, I haven't really like dug in real deep on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there comes a point where it's like, well, I think I'm doing it mm-hmm. and I know I'm not using anything really bad, mm-hmm. but would I be okay with using something if I needed to? Yeah. That's the question, right? And so, you know, first I want to say, like, even if you're not an organic gardener, you're still producing um, produce that mm-hmm. is better than what comes out of a farm, mm-hmm. generally speaking. Yeah, yeah. So um, especially, like, if you grow corn, mm-hmm. you know, let's just villainize corn for a split second. I don't want to go too long it's into it. one of my it, favorites, but, too, unfortunately. Yeah, but, you know, if you have genetically modified corn, it can accept Roundup, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The chemical that makes Roundup. And so they spray it. But you're not going to do that in your garden. No. You're not just going to spray it. You know what I mean? You're going to dig up the weeds. If you have an issue, you're going to take care of it other methods. But if you're going to lose your entire... uh Uh-oh. I I do want to 
I want to be conscious of, especially for new gardeners, things that you may have done to kind of maintain your your lawn, your property, and to balance those two, do you want to do that still now and you're growing food in this area, right? right? So I'm not going to say you need to do one thing or another. I just want you to be conscious of the decision you're making, right? You right. Know, so I collect leaves. It's a part-time job. <laughs> Everybody so, collects something. Yeah, you right? heard it first. Yeah. <laughs> different rooms of she different leaves. She collects leaves. leaves. Yeah, yeah. So um, I... <laughs> I don't. So, well, I do collect leaves, but not as a part-time job. So I, <laughs> these last couple of seasons, as I've closed out the season, I, I've gotten ready to put the garden to sleep. Um, I've decided I wanted to use leaves as kind of a mulch for the winter, right? And the mm-hmm. first couple of years, it worked out really well. Um, but one of the things, I, I bring it up because one of the things I ask, and it's so weird for me, like I'm asking you for something from your property, which everyone's always fine with it, but I also want to ask, like, do you spray anything on your grass, you know, yeah. during the season? Because if you, like, as I'm putting the bags in my car, oh, I forgot to ask, did you spray anything? When they say yes, I'm like, well, you know what? I don't really want your leaves. Um, but I mean- But if they sprayed it on the grass, is that bad? I mean, it was months ago. Yeah, well, I mean, how, but how do I know it was months ago? They could have sprayed in September, and here you have these leaves that have been sitting and soaking up that with all the rain in November right. or October, right? So I think it's the, I'll never know specifically how bad it is. It's not the most natural Right. right. Um, and um, I have to decide if I want to take the chance. Another good version of that is if you sprayed your grass over the years, now you want a garden. Can you plant a garden in that space where you sprayed over the years? Oh, yeah. I'm glad your answer is yes. Yeah, of course you can. You can do anything yeah. you want. But I definitely like let's not not have a garden because of that. You know? Yeah, no. I now, mean, but I don't want cares? you to continue to spray around that garden, though. I don't want you to. Well, I mean, I don't care what you do. If you spray it wrong and it kills your garden, that's your fault. But, you know, and I think that's the big part of it. Like it all comes in. You, you got to know how to use these things mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, if you're fighting to keep a lawn, I totally get like, I want to be organic. I want to do it. But there comes a point where you're like, man, I got to bust out the big guns. So, you know? but if you bust out the big guns all the time, yeah, but or do you use it every once in a while? So well, real quick note, when I first moved in this home, um, I never had grass in the backyard. Um, so the previous owners had, you know, put the concrete patio in. I only had to remember that one space, like 30 feet by four feet, that was just dirt. So I had a little bit of grass in the front yard. And so two of my neighbors had a, a lawn service come in every Monday. They would cut the grass. And so I jumped on board, right? You know, I thought, do I want to buy a lawnmower? No, you know, so I, um, I, everything I start, I start small. So you know how traditionally if a tree was once planted, because it's not the easiest to grow grass on top of where a tree once was, you'll see those little small uh, flower pots or flower beds, right? Right. And I don't know, what are they? Probably like two, two by two or something around. And sure. I had the little, I had my little bricks <coughs> around the little flower pot area um, and, or flower bed area. I planted my little flowers and I was so happy about them. And then I went to work one morning, one Monday, and I came back Monday evening and the flowers were droopy. Some of them were dead. And it took me like a day to realize that I had to ask the guy that I just um, hired for the lawn service. Did you all spray the grass? Well, yes, ma'am. I was so enraged. Um, so that's a tangent. But like oh, I wait, said. Wait, who were you mad at? You or them? I was mad at them. Why are you not mad at yourself? Because you I'm not going to take responsibility for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, but I'll give that in, to all, you. in all fairness to them, again, I'm just one more customer they've added on to this you know, area. It didn't occur to me to ask the question. It, did, it yeah. didn't even occur, right? You know, So we both were kind of in a situation where now, again, that's their business. Did they see the flowers? Yes, right? You know, Should they really have been spr- spraying that close? No. When I had weeds and dandelions growing, would I have complained? Yep. You know, so it's really a catch-22. So that goes back yeah. to the when I ask for people's leaves, 
You know, <laughs> I ask things like, do you spray your yard? Um, yeah. So how much? And the same goes. Go ahead. Yeah. How much if you have. So this is what I'm big on. Luckily, I've been fortunate enough to not have like infestations where I really have to like decide, am I going to cut bait and toss whatever that harvest is? Or am I going to go aggressive when it comes to trying to treat it? I've not had that issue, um, right. but I respect those that are in that situation. So if I plant in May, let's say, not me, because clearly I'm never going to plant in May. Uh, but if I were to plant in May and you've nurtured whatever you've planted from May and June and then July hits and you're getting to the point where you're getting closer to harvest, let's just say I'm just going to give a three month period and some insect name an insect comes in and you've tried all kinds of remedies and it just isn't working. Do you just say, oh, well, you know, I gave it a good try and just give up on that plant? Right. Or do you take a more extreme step, which could be something that's, you know, classified as non-organic? I'm, I support you if you do what you need to do to save your harvest. You know, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now what the, the rule is. And I've been told by the top experts, mm-hmm. you pull that bitch out the ground and you start over. In July, I'm not starting over. Not for it's, that same it's vegetable. A, I mean, man, it's. I'm here to tell you, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hear it either, Mm -hmm. but I've had multiple people, master gardeners Mm -hmm. and, you know, instructors at the school of agriculture and stuff like that. Pull it up, put something in its place Mm -hmm. in July. Mm -hmm. You can put something in its place. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So if I have a tomato plant that goes in the ground in May um, and I generally I've actually planted tomato plants in July. Chances are you're going to get a super super duper small harvest. The question is, do you plant lettuce instead? In my area, lettuce is fine to start off in July, you know, so. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. So, you know, and it kind of bridges into a whole nother show. But, (laughs) you know, if you have a diseased plant, pull that bitch out, Mm -hmm. get it out of there. Well, that's all this going to do is infect everything else. Those are two different things, though. Right. Yeah. No, no. Uh Wait, no, it's not. Well, because. Go. Go ahead. Okay. okay, so I just, I literally, three minutes before we started this, I released a video on YouTube talking about this exact subject. I had a plant, and it was weak. And so what was it doing when it was weak? Well, it had some kind of disease or something. But the problem is, is the plant becomes weak, and everything's like, there it is, and it attacks it. But what happens when that plant dies? Or it gets to the point where it's not feeding anything, where's everything else going to go? everywhere else it's the definition of weakest link brings it down is. the rest it is the weakest yeah. link and so not only did it do that so it didn't bring any pests that i know of because i caught it mm-hmm. but it all it allowed weeds to come into the garden mm-hmm. and then they slowly start to spread and so you know you, you got to get it out of there and i know it hurts and nobody wants to hear it. it's just like cutting the bl- blooms off your mm-hmm. flowers nobody mm-hmm. wants to do that yeah. i mean pfft, come on but it's it's in sacrifice for it unless you're going to spray but a lot of times it's just going to be too much of an issue. Yeah. So last year I had Japanese beetles mm. in my um, green beans oh. and they were terrible, oh. terrible. And I ended up getting rid of them um, with a, a safe method. And then after I got rid of them, then I got grasshoppers. Oh, good grief. Well, I didn't even know that was an issue. Is this, do you think it's maybe how close you are to the woods? Well, I mean, grasshoppers live in the grass. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you're just like, it's, is someone dropping these things off in your <laughs> garden? Like, <laughs> that's what I was wondering last year. Oh, I mean, sucks, well, seeing yeah. if you think about it, <clears throat> the green beans took a beating from the Japanese beetles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then right when they mm-hmm, start to come back, mm-hmm. the grasshoppers yeah. came in. So the reason so why, I uh, just me jump in, because you, you said we're going to talk about it in a whole different show, because... I mean, I think it all, could all end up with the same end result, but insects and then a diseased plant that isn't necessarily based on insects are two different things. Um, yes. But I do think, and I was a little bit annoyed that that video dropped right before we started this because I'm like, now I have to wait like two hours to watch it, you know? And I was like, you drew me in. I was like, oh, shoot. I, was, I almost was late joining because I'm like, maybe I could squeeze it in. So I said, no, 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 I'll wait, I'll wait. <laughs> oh, you uh, saw it come yeah, up? Yeah, I saw it come up. Yeah, yeah, my notifications, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think that, oh, it's so like... You're ju- you're jumping into a the gold mine of kind of the what is it um, 
fight or flight. Like there's a fight or flight part of the garden, right? Yeah. So I have made the mistake before. I have made the mistake before of leaving a disease plan in out of hope. You know, right. well, maybe if it's just, you know, I did that um, last year. I had five tomato plants in one space, four or five. I think it was five. And I knew it was taking a risk. I knew I was crowding them. Um, all and all things start. They always start off well. And then once they got to the point where they were full grown tomatoes, tomato plants and producing tomatoes, I started to notice, you know, oh, these just aren't yellow leaves at the bottom. You know, this plant is diseased. And at that point, I could have basically said, all right, brother, I'm sorry. It's been nice and pulled it, but I didn't. It was It's just so hard, right? It's the responsible mm-hmm. thing to do. And guess what ended up happening? Plant next to it. Now, neither of them completely died. I'm not even going to say anything. Yeah, but they for sure, like they almost just stopped producing. It was just, it was a sad, sad day um, or a set of days because I watched this happen. Um, So I am on team pull it. I want that for you. I'm still struggling with doing it for myself. Right. Well, this was the first time I actually practiced it because I said, you know what, this year, I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, it's funny. Good, do, you, yeah. do you remember what the name of the video was? What the title was? Something about scary and what was it? No, <laughs> no. It was, um, it was remove it or um, save it. Mm-hmm. And then, then the next title was, you know, maximize your garden space. Okay, okay. Because that's what you're doing. Yeah, you're maximizing yeah. it and you're saving yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so there is a balance for, of why it's diseased, though. So if it's if it's soil born, then that's a whole I different world. Think about yeah, that. that definitely is a different show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay, all right. Where are we on the list? So which, we're still in. Which badge am I working on? We're on elimination at okay. this point. So we're just getting so. Um, for the past 25 minutes, we've been talking kind of about <laughs> organic or non-organic, and um, you know, so. Uh, what's an organic method? Let's do that. What's an organic method? For me, an organic method is um, covering. So that's, that's, that's slash prevention. No, oh. no, 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 no. For elimination. Oh, oh. Spoiler alert. I know, right? I'm not keeping track of this because we already re- we, we got to this point in the recording yesterday. This right? is yeah. where we stopped. Yeah, this is where we stopped. Ready to, so. I'm ready for and my it was prevention. Totally different. I'm ready for my prevention badge. Dang it. Yeah. Um, this is, it's funny, too, because we stopped here. But like I can tell you so far, it's completely different than the last absolutely one. Absolutely, it so. is, which is actually the fun in all of this because uh, we have so many opinions about so many things. So an organic method for... Um, I'm going to say, and this is not what you want, but who cares? Um, I've heard sprinkling uh, cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes on insert the thing that something is trying to eat at is a method of. uh, That's for mammals. Oh, I don't know. Give me one then. Dang it. Picking, hand picking. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, just of course. Simp- yeah, pick the just pick as the simple bug as off. hand picking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as soon as you see. I mean, I mean exactly. Of course. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, let's. There's a big, huge elephant in the room. Who wants to touch a damn nasty ass bug? Okay, but yeah, no, I, do you, I don't want to. But but you know, when I had my Japanese beetles. I, I, I began picking them mm-hmm. and I kept a bucket next to the garden. I would just mm-hmm. drop them in the bucket. Yeah. And then every day until I figured out what I was going to do, yeah. I just went out there and I'm talking about when I picked, whew, boy, I would pick, yeah. I would get like 50 a day and I would get them while they were humping too. And there's some very <laughs> white going on out there and they was getting two it for on. The price and I would of grab what? The... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She's so silly. But it's not just two for the price of one. Mm-hmm. It was like, it could have been 50 or 100 after that. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's a good so point. that's yeah. how you got to think about it. Mm-hmm. And then um, my grasshoppers, same thing. I had, I still don't have any idea how to get rid of them. Mm-hmm, so I just mm-hmm. went out there and I, I mean, I mean, these were like big old honkers, man. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, yeah. And they would jump at you. And I went out there with my clippers and I'd sneak up on them and right in half, boy. I would just be getting I, them. I had a few them. grasshoppers in the garden, but nothing like you're describing. I, grasshoppers I never knew. and dragonflies were like swarming. Swarming is not, that's exaggerating. Um, well, you know, no, it's not last year. Yeah, last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a dragonfly swarm that came down. You mm, know that, right? No, I didn't. You could see it on the radar. That and um, they had ladybugs too. What radar are we talking about? 
um, the rain radar. Oh, okay. It okay. looked like rain clouds on uh, the radar. Yeah, yeah. And we were actually sitting out one night. Um, my son, it was right after he started kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting, we went to go have pizza and we were sitting outside eating. And I was like, holy crap, look at all these dragonflies coming through. Mm-hmm. They were just coming down this alley. And then we went and we um, we looked it up and there was like a huge swarm coming oh through gosh. our area. For some so, reason, I'm thinking West Side Story. Like, <laughs> not familiar with it. I tuned it out. The movie yes, West Side Story? I'm not a fan. But there are a number of reasons why one would not be, but <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Who knew that was going to be touchy? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess maybe those are the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there was a swarm last year of that. And then there was a swarm of ladybugs last year as well. Same so generally, thing. though, ladybugs can be beneficial, I thought. Yeah, they are, but no, a swarm is not bad. A swarm of anything, probably. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, and speaking of ladybugs, there's another good method that a lot of people do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They release ladybugs in their garden because they love aphids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But should you buy ladybugs? I was hoping that you didn't make me say this. I'm not anti, I am anti a lot of things, but for gardening, I'm not anti many things, but I just, I don't want to buy worms. I don't want to buy worm castings. Although I think I did buy a bag of those, but that's a different story. Um, I don't want to buy ladybugs to drop. Like for me personally, no, I don't want to. You know how I look at it? I kind of look at it like if you can't attract the ladybug or the worms, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. where I saw you know, this somewhere I th- where it was like, sure, drop them off and then come out tomorrow and notice how none of them are there because you haven't, like, you, you haven't created the environment to, yeah. you know, for them to thrive yeah yeah i mean that's a big part of gardening though is creating you're i mean you're creating a mini mini ecosystem Mm -hmm, mm mini m-i-n-i ecosystem not many but a mini one you know so you're going to create this little oasis for these animals and i think that's really big yeah so, um, but I mean am i anti buying them no if you want to buy them buy them yeah i'm I'm gonna go um, with being anti that you can keep that badge yeah yeah so, yeah. I mean, that's another way. And then there's stuff like um, neem oil. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So neem oil is a good one. Really good um, for aphids in particular, right? Yeah. yeah. I've not Anything, used it before. Really. Yeah, I've not used it before. I've used it. Yeah. I use it. I use it on my aphids this year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you just, it makes the plant taste really bad uh-huh. for them. So they leave. Mm-hmm. It's great. Marigolds? Right? Give Marigolds. me the badge. Or so they beneficial say. Beneficial plantings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah beneficial mm-hmm. plantings are good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another one that I use is Dale's dead bug juice. Mm. Yep. It's just organic, you know, but I think part of the problem is, is when you buy something in a spray bottle, it's like, <gasps> yeah, oh, yeah. Cause I was saying to myself, it. it's the poison that's, that's created organically. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know anything about Dale's, um, spray. So I'm it's not basically yeah. neem oil mm-hmm. and some other mm-hmm. stuff in yeah. it. Um, BT one, sp- one thing about all of that spinicide. though is like the idea of any of those sprays, you're only going to be able to, it's only going to be between waterings and or rain, you know, that stuff you're going to need to do it again once water hits it. And that's, that just turns no. me off. No, Dale, no, you don't not, have to. No. No, you you so I mean you obviously don't go out in the rain and spray it, but let's say you water, mm-hmm. then you go out and then so <clears throat> there's a good and bad time to do this too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you want to do this late in the afternoon when all of the beneficial pollinators and insects are kind of gone for the evening, mm-hmm. so you don't harm them. But you spray it, and then the bugs that are on there they're gonna get it. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to die. And then you come back because they've laid eggs. So you've got to get them when they come back. Yeah. So there's a time you can't just do it once. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to do it multiple times. So like, you know, and they have these little instructions. I mean, it's ridiculous. They have these little instruction booklets that are like taped to the side you're supposed to like keep up with. Okay. <laughs> but it'll tell you like the intervals you do it. Mm-hmm. And it takes like two or three treatments. But no, you can. It's not an issue. I mean, I've definitely like I've taken care of a lot of. of um, infestations with that. That's two or three times more than none, right? Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's either that or I mean, after I saw what they did, the grasshopper yeah, did to my yeah. green beans, mm-hmm. it was—I mean, it was pitiful. Yeah. But that one it is was the like, one that basically there's a bitter taste. But it sounds like you describe like, oh, it's going to take out that first round of whatever the thing is. Right? Yeah, the Dale's the Dale's dead bug juice will take them out. Mm-hmm, it's got mm-hmm. spinocide in it, mm-hmm. okay, which is a natural. 
something okay. pesticide and neem oil i think it will do the same but i think what it really does is make it kind of taste bad mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so they leave i think it does a little it was, bit of i thought both. it was a bit of the, the um uh the texture almost like the that that might substance be. on the plant yeah, yeah it might be but i mean you know so there's there's definitely products you can mm-hmm, get mm-hmm. so just because you're buying a product does not mean that it is not organic yeah so, um, you know, be careful and I mean, do your research. Yeah. And you there's know. a balance of, again, what you want to spend your garden money on. Right. You know, yeah. so. Um, I mean, that's a part is that of one of our too. new signs. Is that? No, okay. I just <laughs> had, held it in my hand. Dude, my desk that everything is on because I've been trying to work on this situation mm-hmm. is trash. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. It's a nightmare. This is actually my table, dining room table, because my office wasn't good enough for our podcast. Um, no. Yeah, you it's did just, get kicked yeah, out of the yeah. office. <laughs> so it's like one corner of my my dining room table that I can eat on now because it's podcast equipment everywhere else. But that's fine. And if anybody is wondering why I'm in a sleeveless shirt, first of all, because it's hot. Uh-huh. And that's what I do. But we just had a tropical storm come by. Another one. Another one? one? Yeah. Yeah. Another one. And... um. Dude, when they come through, the humidity is like 100%. Oh. It's And the sun's out right now, and it's humid. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah. Well, I'm sleeveless it's because a, I am uh, willing warm weather forever to come. I was out earlier yeah. this morning, and um, I actually felt the cool breeze, and I knew rain was coming. But yeah, man. It's, oh, really? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually, it's but it's past now, so the sun's coming back out. Um, it's getting ready for some cooler temps coming in this weekend. We're dropping from like mid 70s to like lower 60s but i'm hoping that's the end of it for us at this point we're at the end of may filming um so i'm thinking that my june 1st planting date it's gonna be a real I thing think you should do may 31st yeah, and make maybe. it one day earlier so you could say you planted I beat it yeah in may. yeah yeah oh i don't care about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you know Elimination. there's all these different products you can mm-hmm. do um oh so what i did for my japanese beetles uh as well as hand picking, I sprayed neem oil mm-hmm. and I got um, traps for them. Oh, okay. And you hang them in a tree mm-hmm. and they just fly in there and they die. Mm-hmm. So I did that and um, I will be doing that again. Uh, as soon as I see them, I got the tree figured mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. They're going in there. It's, you know, I can't yeah. operate that way. It's yeah. just, it was too decimating. Yeah. Because what happens is the plant's constantly trying to produce uh, fruit or, you know, in the case of green beans, seed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's it's like producing seed, producing leaves, producing seed, producing leaves, like constantly trying to rebuild. Yeah. And it's just too much. Yeah, and there's so. also the balance of, so all of these things are intertwined. It's just like regular, regular life gardening is. It's not just kind of one level or one focus. How much time do you want to spend treating yeah. these things, right? You know, so that's the reason why I'm not, well, I'm anti buy beetles or ladybugs. I'm not anti. All right. You can fast forward to Dave and Buster's. Dave's Dave, Dale's dead bug. Yeah, juice. You can fast forward to that, man. I mean, I'm, I, what I don't want, I was listening to this somewhere recently. I can't remember where, but it doesn't matter. I'm so for afraid for first time gardeners to be kind of one and done. Like, I feel like a part of my duty is to help you to get to season two, you know? So if, yeah. you, don't, if you walk away from it after season two, all right, maybe it wasn't for you. Um, but I, I'm trying to, you know, speak the good word so folks can understand some of these things happen. You know, in some cases, while gardening teaches us patience, in some cases, you do have to put a little bit more time in, but there's slower remedies and there are faster remedies, you know, so. Well, it teaches you patience, but I think, you know, and we're going to get into this in a second, you know, the prevention aspect, the first time gardeners really don't have the same issues as long term Mm -hmm. because their brand, you know, everything's new for them, Mm -hmm. but you're still going to have issues. But see, that's the problem is you see, you know, the first insect that people see, and when I say they, I mean, just saying in general, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times like, oh my God, I have something out there, but I mean, dude, you're going to have bugs in the garden and you want them, you know, it's like last year I had, um, if you do a deep dive into my Instagram, there's a picture of a wheel bug. Mm. and it's an assassin bug and it's a nasty looking booger but it kills 
the bad bugs. I love it. I've never heard so of it you before. Just, you just leave them there, yeah. you know, and they look like dinosaurs. So, you know, but as I saw it, I was like, well, I don't know. And they were all over my cucumbers. And I was like, I don't know. But I just kept watching and nothing happened to yeah, my cucumbers. Yeah. So I'm like, why should I change anything? You know, I mean, eventually something happened. That's they got powdery mildew and mm-hmm, died, but mm-hmm. it didn't have anything to do with these assassin bugs. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's all these different things out there and people need to know about it. And just because you see it, it's not like, oh, shit, that's the end of my garden. Yeah. You know, aphids are not a big deal. You can get, but you got to catch these yeah. things, you know? Yeah. The, uh, you're, you're, you're expanding nature right in your backyard, right? You, you really know? are. So there's, um, there's a part of what we're doing that's absolutely natural, but there's a part that isn't exactly natural. And some of the steps we take to try to prevent things aren't exactly natural, right? Remember we were talking about dinosaurs and tomatoes, uh, right? And the, there wasn't any kind of weed control or anything there. So they were, there were a lot of, uh, <laughs> definitely find that episode. There were a lot of um, just weeds because no one was spraying and no one was like chopping them down or anything like that. Um, there, I'm not saying just let your garden go, not that, but um you're interrupting in some instances, letting nature take its course, so to speak. Yeah. Right. You know, so I say that to say in some instances it's natural. There are some things which we're about to get into that you can do to help or hurt, you know, your situation, but um, it's, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, not the end of your garden. No. Well, why don't we stop teasing it? Because um, we've been on for a minute. Mm -hmm, Let's go mm -hmm. straight to prevention Prevention, um, prevention. This is my favorite. And I think this is, this is my I favorite because this is all I do. right? <laughs> well, and I mean, that's the biggest mm-hmm, part of it mm-hmm. is prevention. If you can prevent it, then you don't even have to worry mm-hmm. about it. So, like, I mean, what's the number one thing that you do that you prevent? Because I know something you don't do for prevention. Are you telling my oh, garden secrets? I got the dirt. I talk so much about gardening with Ben where I, sometimes I don't even remember what I've told him. So. <laughs> I got the one of my dirt. biggest things that I do for prevention is I use coverings. Um, and that's because luckily I don't have some of the, the problems you've described with some of the, um, the non beneficial bugs and such. Um, so some of my biggest problems are, um, you know, those four legged creatures, but specifically the cabbage moth is a good example. And so I've used this fabric row coverings would do it as well. I've used this fabric called tool T U L L E to cover my bed. It's a pain in the butt. Um, I, I'm not even sure if I still want to recommend it. I do tell people about this, but the fabric itself, while it's effective, it's so delicate. So I can never get more than one season out of it. But anywho, I use coverings in general to prevent whatever that flying bug is from getting to whatever my plant is. But that helps with your squirrels, right? Yeah, it does help with the squirrels. You know, you put a little couple of roadblocks in front of them and they're like, I'm sure there's some other place I can get, you know, a yeah. leftover pizza crust. <laughs> so first, I want to say two things about that. One, I refuse to use coverings. Uh, I, get I don't it. like it. I get it. Yeah, it's just too much of a pain. I hate and it, doing it, but it's it's worked for me. Yeah. But you have a different situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're really battling squirrels mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, and another thing too is people ask all the time how to get rid of animals in like animals, mm-hmm. not insects, mm-hmm. but animals. And I want to tell you a story about how I learned this. Uh-oh. So when I worked up um, in New England, there was this lady. She was a really nice lady. And I hope to God she's not listening to this because <laughs> if she's not with us anymore, she oh. definitely won't be after I tell this oh, story. No. But um, she was so nice and she would walk around every afternoon. She had a candy box Mm -hmm. and she would bring us candy, little like, you know, Halloween candy. Mm -hmm. It was a little weird because we're all grown ass Mm -hmm. adults and, you know, but whatever. I already love her. Every office either has a candy lady or a candy dish. Right. But go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's definitely the candy Mm -hmm. lady. But so just to make it even weirder that she would only go around and give it to the guys, not the girls. Okay, well, yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Well, that's that's there's a different word for it. But go on. So then she she was telling me um, how she trapped her squirrels that got into her house and she used um, a have a heart trap. Which is, I use those, oh, I get okay, possums okay. and stuff uh-huh. like that. I use, I have a heart trap. Mm-hmm. And I have a heart trap is just a trap you put bait in it, it goes in, boom, 
closes mm-hmm. and then you can remove them. They're still alive, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. completely alive. Mm-hmm. No harm. I'd done it for um, groundhogs. Mm-hmm. I had a groundhog. Boy, that bitch was nasty mm-hmm, too, mm-hmm, son. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mm. and he because I noticed I came home early from work one day and I noticed that I was like, damn, I'm missing like a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I came home a little bit earlier the next day and I saw his little fat mm-hmm. ass sitting out there mm-hmm. eating. Mm-hmm. So I went and I had bought um, a multi-pack of them. They're different sizes. Yeah. And I trapped them and um, you trap them and then check with your local laws and then just move them out to the woods mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. somewhere far away. You know, squirrels, it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah, I've done yeah. it with chipmunks, though, and it worked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, it just depends how bad it is. But that's one way. But she, however, would use her have a heart trap, and then she'd go down to the pond and hold the animal in the water. Oh, my god! And she would... T- <laughs> She would tell us how it would like the cage would be shaking and fighting and she'd pull it out and be drowned. And we were like, this nice old lady now is she's murdering. These, it's she's, like every 60 minutes Dateline story you've ever heard. Oh, my serial gosh. Serial killer yeah, nation. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah, like, yeah. why didn't you just put out a rat trap? Oh, that's and terrible. Then you would, like, that's twisted. Yeah. 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 Way, I mean, yeah. it is twisted the way she did it. So, um, but we're not yeah, endorsing do that. that method. No, we are not endorsing because I think that's that's yeah, crueler yeah. than just shooting them. Mm, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But you know, that's have so a heart bad. trap works. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you have mammals and issues like that, you know, possums, mm-hmm. raccoons, all that stuff, just be careful when you handle it. Yeah, that's gloves. the part that freaks me out. Yeah. So yeah. there, there are far and too I mean, many city squirrels in my neighborhood to even bother yeah, with that. You would never get on top but of that. But we do have, um, and my a neighbor across the alley and I, we joke about her. We can't speak about possums because it's like one of the many things that freaks me out. And like I feel like if she and I, like Candyman, we can't say it three times. Otherwise, they'll appear, you know, but that would be something because they're not, you know, they're not a Wait, bunch of them. Wait, what would it appear? The, nope. Nope. <laughs> you can say it, but I'm not going to go I along forgot. with you. Is yeah. it raccoons? I forgot. It's not. It's not. Okay. Because mm. you've said it twice. No, so. no. <laughs> These are the things I forget. Have... I tell him in, in a conversation later on today, I'm going to be, I'm going to somehow say it a third time and bam. Yeah. I'm gonna be sitting on my back porch. <laughs> so, um, one of the ways though, um, is crop rotation. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So crop rotation oh, that's is really the secret. big. That's the secret. So Batavia doesn't really. She she is now though. You're you such a tattletale. Right. <laughs> you told everybody before. I know, but I mean, no one's listening to that episode at that moment, right? Uh, uh, now they're going back. Yeah. So I still struggle with it. I have yeah. So crop rotation, notoriously bad at it. I've by default done it because I've tried to grow different things, but it's not been a part of my plan. I have, and I've struggled with it this coming into the season, like trying to plan for that, trying to think about, this is like, you know, the project manager in me trying to think about what I'm planting this year and then what's going to be in that bed next year. But I do, I do see the value in it. Um, Well, what is the value? Well, so the, uh, uh, what is the purpose? Collard greens are a great example of it. So I don't want, I have in now bed number 11 collard greens from last year. And I could pull them up and plant new plants because they've gone to flower. They're, you know, it's taking forever to go to seed, which is a whole different conversation. Um, I can put those same plants there, but I am, I am creating an opportunity for infestation to set in in that bed. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but it's a fungus another gardener on YouTube mentioned to me. And once you get that fungus, it's hard to get out of the soil. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's better for me. I'm actually going to plant beans there, I think. It's better for me to move, when I say move, I mean plant my collards this year in a different bed in different soil um, to try to uh, minimize, if if not eliminate, you know, the chances of that happening. So, you know what we need to do? Um, we need to have a whole show about crop rotation. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's talk about let's it because it. I feel like I feel like people take it for granted. I don't think it's as easy as, um, you know, it's some people advertise, if you will. So I'd like to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's I think <clears throat> it's a mixed bag. Mm-hmm, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, do you have to do it every year? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you're on a farm, like people on farms, they 100% do it every yeah, year and they yeah. should because they have 
thousands of the same mm-hmm, crop mm-hmm. next to each other. Yeah. But, you know, when you're in this little micro garden thing that we have going, I mean, even if you have an acre garden, mm-hmm. you still are in a micro compared to a farm. Yes, ma'am. Hashtag micro garden. You heard it here first. Hashtag mm-hmm. micro garden. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's like, do you have to rotate every year? This, that, and the other, you know, certain plants. So basically what it is, is if you, and I use this analogy sometimes, if you have a plant, in the same spot every year, mm-hmm. the you know the pests know where to get it. So imagine if you go to grocery shopping, and somebody comes in your house and they move all your groceries to a whole other side of your kitchen, mm-hmm. you're still going to go to the same place probably for a while yeah. to look for it. Mm-hmm. But once you move it, you're going to be like, oh no! So the you know the insects the same thing. They're going to be like, whoa, yeah, that tomato is not there anymore. I got it, you know. And then they might leave or they'll go somewhere else. So. You know, and then diseases and stuff like that. So, you know, crop rotation mm-hmm, is a big one. Mm-hmm. And there's also the that's um, not exactly related to prevention for um, for pests and such. But there's some plants that are heavy uh, feeders compared to others. And so right. that soil may be weakened, if you will. Um, yeah. And so the idea of you moving that a crop to someplace else gives that soil a chance to rest and recover. Um, so Which leads us into amending soil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of our, fa- it's either, one of our favorite topics, I think. Yeah. It's either, you know, folding in some kind of compost mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. just fertilizing in itself mm-hmm, does a lot. Mm-hmm, you know, it mm-hmm. feeds the microbes in the soil because, you know, damn, I said soil again. Makes I me love mad. it. <laughs> you know, when we're, we, um, you made me lose my train of thought now. See, <laughs> Cheers, that's what yeah. happens. Uh, so when you go through and you feed that the microbes back into it, because we're draining everything mm-hmm, out mm-hmm. of it, you know, especially if you're doing like a spring, summer plant, and then a fall mm-hmm, planting, mm-hmm. you're draining that constantly. So you have to keep it up. Yeah. And then strong, I mean, it's just like everything else. You start at the foundation and the rest of it is going to be good. Yep. Better. not Maybe not good, but better. Great. Is that safe to say better? I'm saying great. Okay. Great. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Tony the Tiger. <laughs> All right. So um, where do we leave anything off? Anything else? Do I get a badge for it? Amending soil. If you come up with another one, you can have a badge. You know, I don't think you control the badges for the show. Oh, I'm in I'm in charge yeah. of the badges. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna to get a participation you. badge for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think mean, there's, there's a, a level of, of interplanting also, um, which we not committed to talking about yet on the podcast, but there's a level of interplanting where some veggies ward off other veg or um, problematic bugs and pests that are drawn to other ve- veggies. Like I've read mm-hmm. a little bit recently about how onions can deter insert a bug that onions don't like, you know, maybe that's more for mammals and pests. I don't remember now. But I'm going to go with interplanting for the badge, sir. Yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, interplanting and then um, knowing w- when to water mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm, like Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it's overall health of your plant yeah. is really what's going to help wow. it, you know. Another thing, because um, I'm going for the, the double, I'm going to overachieve uh, here. So I did this today. I did this today and caught myself. Um, so I was trimming my cucumber plants with, before. They're not in the ground yet. And I think I started those too early. It's such a balance of realizing what I started too early versus too late this first time out. Um, but they've, they're in the itty bitty seed, um, the seed starts, which is so small. But anyway, I was cutting the leaves off, the ones that I just know aren't going to make it. They're yellow and they're just not going to turn green again. And I was just, normally I'll have a bucket right next to me so I can just toss it in the bucket. But the way I had them, I was just cutting them, dropping them on the deck, cutting them, dropping them on the deck. And so I was at, this is the last uh, chore I had before I went in the house. And I very much just wanted to keep on walking to the back door. And I said, nope, 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 nope. Scoop this up, throw it away. You know, yeah. so when you're um, pruning, if if you will, especially yeah. if there's some problem leaves, don't leave that in your garden, man. Get rid Take of it, it with man. you. You're just, le- you're asking for mm-hmm. it at that point. It's an you invitation, know? you know, if you leave yeah. it there. Yeah. And that's why composting is so good because you can just drop mm, it in the mm-hmm, compost mm-hmm, and walk away. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's not diseased or if there's no harm in it, definitely. Use oh that. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. of course. I mean, that goes without mm-hmm. saying. Well, no, I said I it. say yeah. that, but I should say <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I, I said it. I yes, yeah, say it. Um, yeah. So I mean, those are you know the most basic ways mm-hmm. 
to do it. And then I'm just going to throw in quickly um, beneficial flowers mm-hmm. and um, companion planting. Mm-hmm. So companion planting is really important, though, because some plants will, you know, attract one um, pest, but then the next one that you plant next to it will deter it and vice versa. So that's really important, too. Yeah. Um, and then I'm not, I'm not sure two, how much I'm team companion planting I'm on. Are you, did you put your peppers and your tomatoes together? I don't understand. Thank you. We'll see. Are you going to? So the first, no. so the look was, you said so you the, were. the look was, he knows I haven't planted yet. And so he knows I'm going to be uncomfortable about dressing that I haven't planted yet. And then um, the going to is just a whole, like, I'm not going to rework my plan. Where is my sheet of paper that has Now you plan? promised me you would. Yeah. You got to try it. Right. I'm telling yeah. you, I've never had success like I did last year. Okay. I stumbled. Well, if I have nothing one. more, I mean, the amount of tomatoes and peppers, I got enough plants to, like, to plant to, uh, peppers around every tomato plant on the south side of Chicago. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You'll, you know. Yes. Uh, thanks for the reminder. I will. It makes it's Not it all, works. but I'll try it. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. You know, put one or two next mm-hmm, to them or something. Mm-hmm. It definitely works. But, um, you know, those are your basic ways. So, you know what time it is? It's time for you to provide a recipe. No, ma'am. <laughs> It's time for Batavia to give the uh, recipe of the day. And um, I forgot. Then I remember that I forgot. And here I am now forgetting again. So I'm going to give my favorite recipe that I've been saving. So my favorite garden recipe of the day, which... Everything besides the olive oil you can grow in your garden. And I'm really working on growing all of these ingredients. I may be one season away from it. Um, But it is a kind of a baked eggplant, tomato, uh, onion dish. I know, just just throw it all in one pan and bake it. No, it puts you in the mind of lasagna. Um, So you start with your bottom layer. And I may get this twist it back and forth, but we'll figure it out. We'll put the link in the description to where you can find the actual recipe that I'm using. Um, So you use one layer of onions on the bottom of a casserole dish, Um, sprinkle uh, or pour in a little bit of olive oil or whatever oil that you choose that's going to go well with baking. Um, You're going to hopefully have some fresh tomatoes. You're going to put a layer of tomatoes, thinly sliced on top of the onions, Uh, And then you're going to take a layer of um, eggplant, thinly sliced. And then you're going to sprinkle this with, I use just generally salt and pepper, but be liberal with the salt. It's going to feel like it's too much, but keep on sprinkling. And then you continue to layer it as high as your casserole dish goes, sprinkling or pouring olive oil in between. And what ends up happening, you don't need to add any type of sauce to it. The only thing that you need is that oil and then the waters from the onions and the other veggies. So onion, tomato, eggplant, onion, tomato, eggplant, at least two layers of each. Uh, You're going to bake it at about 425 degrees. It's going to start to get bubbly and gushy and gooey because 425 degrees Fahrenheit because of the oils and the onions that are being released and the um, the tomato juice. And I've used this as a side, like with a salad, but I've also used it if you're an egg eater, you can put it on top of some uh, scrambled eggs. It is my favorite dish from the summer about 25 minutes but you want to have it look kind of charred that's the goal um so while we don't have these things in my garden now i share this recipe with you to encourage you to grow these veggies yeah you know because i mean if if you grow you haven't grown eggplant yet have you oh yeah in my garden before but not this year okay well i haven't planted anything but i got a bunch of eggplants to put in the garden right so you get a lot of eggplants and a lot of tomatoes Mm -hmm. so that's a that's a good Mm -hmm. thing Um, and it may include um, zucchini i have to look back i don't remember can you put cheese in it i've not tried it but i'm sure you could top it with cheese but i would probably if you put cheese on it i would probably do that in like the last five minutes of cooking because you don't want to get that too um you want everything else to soften you don't want to get that cheese too burnt Oh, I do. I like burnt do cheese. You? Oh, interesting. That's my thing. That's my thing. Burnt bread and burnt cheese. Mm. 
So when I go to my family's house, this is just a quick side note, and they have like lasagna or something. My whole family, like my blood family, Mm -hmm. you go through and everybody eats on the outside and there's nothing but like the (laughs) middle of lasagna left over. Very much and about nobody the crisp. will eat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then nobody will eat yeah, it. So, yeah. yeah, that's um, that's a good one. That's that's a real good. I'm gonna try it. Sharp so. broiled uh, veggie lasagna. I don't think give that's it a the name. name of it. Give it a um, name. It's like a ratatouille. Yeah, almost. it's char broiled trio. And let's gonna assume that it doesn't have zucchini in it. So, char broiled veggie trio. Tomato, eggplant, onion. It's toe casserole. No. Tomato, onion, eggplant, toe casserole. <laughs> that does not that, sound yeah, good. Because you know what that sounds like. It sounds <laughs> like the word you just good. use to describe it. Yeah. So, yeah, or is... if you guys listen to this episode and have, cause I'm hoping that you maybe tried this recipe before. If you haven't, absolutely do it. It's going to be worth it. Um, I'll write in, I'll send Ben the description of the recipe to, uh, to use measurements and all. We'll include that in the show notes. But help us with the name for it. Yeah. Add a comment name to this the uh, recipe. Yeah, add a comment to the uh episode here. Yeah, yeah, help us name the recipe. Mm-hmm. I mean, my goodness. Mm-hmm. So, that's the, I mean, that's key, you know, if if I go in something like cuz I have a recipe called trash soup. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like a bunch of leftovers, but I went somewhere and I took it and they're like, "What's this soup?" I was like, "This is trash soup." And they're like, <laughs> "I ain't trying to eat that." Uh-huh, and it's like, uh-huh. "No, nah, go ahead and try." It. And then they liked it, but you know, bad name. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. It is definitely eye catching okay. or ear catching. Yeah. Either. Ear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, are do you know everything you, you need to know about pests? I know more it? than I need to know about pests. I think I, I um, have been looking forward to this episode, but looking forward to it so we can get it be behind us because yeah, uh, I'm f- it's a tough one, man. It's a tough subject. Yeah, I mean, it, we actually could go hours into this. I mean, you could spend an hour talking about any one plant and the troubles that the, that particular plant has with certain pests, um, but we won't do that. <laughs> so I, we're hoping this information has been helpful. Um, and if not, don't yeah. tell us that it hasn't. <laughs> no, let us know. I want to know if it's not helpful. But I mean, you know, I think it's important that, you know, we gave it to you in order of detection, mm-hmm. elimination and prevention. Mm-hmm. But you should start with prevention. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You should start preventing. And if you use a have a heart trap, don't stick them in the water oh, and kill them. We don't, don't yeah. endorse that no. in any way, shape or form. That was just it was a true story. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. true. But um, yeah. So, um, you know. If you guys have any questions, let us know. You know, we'd be more than happy to help you. We would be more than happy to kind of, you know, if, you, if you're going to send either one of us a picture, first of all, you can do it um, on either one of our Instagrams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just make sure we can kind of see it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we can kind of go from there because a little speck doesn't really do any good. But, you know, just kind of go through the detection methods and find out and do your garden walks, man. Enjoy yeah, them. Yeah. I think that's a big part, man. Enjoy those garden yeah. walks. Don't just go out there to work. If you tag, if you um, post a picture, tag us, hashtag BYG podcast, and that'll catch yep, one we'll or both it. of our eyes. Um, and I absolutely endorse taking a stroll through the garden when you're not working, very intentionally not working, because yeah. it can feel like a full-time job, maybe not a full-time job, but it could feel like a job and we don't want just that for you. There's work to it, obviously, no. but yeah, there's work, but you enjoy mm-hmm. it, you know, take your time, yeah. enjoy it. Don't go out there in the middle of the day though. Gosh, it's okay. That's brutal. Just look out the window it, during the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, um, okay. We've hit our limit. We're good. We, um, First one in the books being filmed, even though it's not the first one you're going to watch, but this is the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, hit us up everywhere you can. Batavia, you got anything to tell the good people? So the garden and we tribe? are, this will be in June, right? This one will be here. Yeah. Um, so you should look out for garden progressions for me over on YouTube at Be Better Garden. So I'm going to show you when the garden was just in its earliest stages where tumbleweeds were still flying around to where I've planted things, so when things are th- are growing, hopefully, if there have been any bugs or anything like that that not, are not beneficial, I've treated them, I've prevented them, and all of that good stuff. Um, and let's see what happens with my container gardening experiment. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. 
Oh, wait. Psych. <laughs> yeah, um, just stay tuned for what we got going on. You'll see some pictures and stuff like that. And things are kind of happening, but yeah, again, yeah. I can't really talk about yeah. it just yet. So oh, I hate when people do that, but we I really know, can't talk about it right now. Sorry. I really can't <laughs> talk about it right now, but um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, everybody have a good day. Get out in your garden, work in it, but enjoy it. Hey, Ben. And we will... What? Congratulations. Virtual high fives, For what? man. We got this first one recorded, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. We did. Wait, it's not over yet. Well, listen now. Be hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, everybody have a good time and we will see you guys later. See ya. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. You can find us at Backyard Gardens the Movie on Facebook and Backyard Gardener on Instagram. And YouTube is Backyard Gardener, where I'm doing videos showing cooking and building gardens and gardening tips, all kinds of good stuff. And you can find Batavia at... You'll find me on Instagram at B underscore Better Garden. And then you'll find me on Facebook, same name. And then I'm also over on YouTube at Be Better Garden. I am sharing hashtag Garden Joy every chance I get. I hope you enjoy. So if you have any questions, hit us up on all of our platforms anywhere you want, and we will be more than happy to help you with what you can. And again, thanks for listening, and we will see you guys next time. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.